Apple has officially released iOS 26.1, and though it's not a major update, there are some really useful changes that are worth checking out. One of the biggest changes is a new toggle for Apple's liquid glass design language. You can now choose between clear or tinted modes by heading into settings, display and brightness, and then liquid glass. Clear mode keeps the highly transparent layered look that Apple introduced with iOS 26, so basically what you're running now, while tinted adds more opacity and contrast to help with readability, especially in bright environments. A lot of users, when liquid glass was originally released, kind of found it to be too see-through or just hard to read, so this small addition actually makes a pretty big difference, especially in areas like the uh, notification shade on your lock screen. There's also a new option to disable the lock screen camera shortcut. Under settings, camera, lock screen, swipe to open camera, you can now completely turn off the swipe left to open gesture. If you've ever accidentally opened your camera while pulling your phone out of your pocket, this one's for you. Really, this one's for me because I do it all the time. Next, Apple's made a change to alarms and timers. So when an alarm goes off, you now need to slide to stop it instead of just tapping. Tapping still snoozes the alarm, but if you want to dismiss it entirely, you have to slide it. It's a small tweak, but it helps prevent those accidental oversleeps when you meant to just hit snooze. And also, it kind of gives me that slide to unlock nostalgia that we used to have with the iPhone. Apple Music also gets a little shortcut improvement. You can now swipe the now playing bar left or right to skip or go back to a track without opening the full player view. It's one of those simple, smaller changes that makes things just a lot smoother and easier to deal with. You can also create custom workouts in the fitness app on iPhone. There are options for selecting workout type, estimated active calories, effort, duration, and start time. As far as the Apple TV app goes, it now has a new, more colorful icon that adopts the liquid glass aesthetic that Apple added alongside the Apple TV Plus name change. So Apple is no longer referring to its streaming service as Apple TV Plus and is instead just calling it Apple TV like the app. There are also a bunch of visual refinements across the OS too. So settings, headers are now left aligned. Folder names on the home screen are also aligned to the left. And parts of the phone keypad, Safari tab bar, and photo scrubber have been subtly refreshed to fit better with the liquid glass design. They're small touches, but they kind of help, again, everything be a bit more consistent. For Apple intelligence and live translation users, iOS 26.1 now adds new language support. Live translation now works with Japanese, Korean, Italian, and both traditional and simplified Chinese, while Apple Intelligence adds Danish, Dutch, Norwegian, Portuguese, Swedish, Turkish, and more. Finally, there's a new background and security improvements toggle inside privacy and security. It basically replaces the older rapid security response system, giving you more control over how those smaller updates are installed automatically in the background. So, iOS 26.1, again, isn't a massive update, but Kind of the one that tightens up a lot of the annoying bugs and gives you a more readable UI, some smarter customization, and better day-to-day -day polish, which is, again, what you want to see with these refinements over the course of this release cycle. So, would love to hear from you in the comments down below. How do you feel about Liquid Glass now that we're a few months in officially? Do you like this new update with the tinted Liquid Glass option that you could kind of tone things down a bit? Are you going to use that? Let me know in those comments down below. This is Dan with Mac Rumors. Thanks so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you around in the next video.